Skies are sunny and they're going to stay clear during the overnight hours. It's going to be a cool night as a result. Low by morning in Sioux Falls, 30 degrees. 26 Aberdeen, 27 up here, 26 in Rapid City. During the day tomorrow, sunshine then in the morning and then the clouds are going to thicken up during the afternoon. It'll be a mild day, 58 Sioux Falls, 54 Aberdeen, 55 in Pier, 58 in Rapid City. And the clouds are going to create rain on Saturday across much of the Kelloland region. We'll have that weekend forecast coming up. Kelloland News, first at four, starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. Coming up, what's next for the former Democratic vice presidential candidate, Tim Walls? Plus, how money from the Minnesota lottery will help protect the environment in the state. And we take you to California, where dozens of homes have been damaged in a mountain fire. Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. A box elder man arrested in an undercover sting admits sending nude pictures to someone he believed to be a 14-year-old girl. Authorities arrested Vance Coates during this year's Sturgis motorcycle rally. And according to court papers, Coates plans to plead guilty to an attempted receipt of child pornography when he is sentenced. Coates faces a minimum of five years in federal prison. Under the plea agreement, he'll also be required to register as a sex offender. A Brandon man is behind bars in northwest Iowa after a high-speed pursuit southeast of Larchwood. 32-year-old Derek Wayne Vining was arrested for a list of charges, including theft, eluding, and reckless driving. The Lyon County Sheriff's Office says deputies were called to the area around 9 o'clock yesterday morning for a report of a suspicious vehicle. An SUV took off from the scene, reaching speeds over 100 miles an hour. The pursuit ended east of Rock Rapids. According to the Sheriff's Office, Vining's bond is currently $18,000. The Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office recently did alcohol compliance checks at several businesses across the county. In total, 43 businesses were checked, 41 of them passed. The two businesses that failed are Chaser's Bar and Buffalo Ridge Brewing. One person died and another was seriously hurt in a head-on crash two miles west of Rapid City. The Highway Patrol says a 44-year-old man was driving a car in the wrong direction on I-90 on Wednesday night and hit a pickup head-on. The man driving the car died in the crash. The 56-year-old man who was driving the pickup has life-threatening injuries. All right, let's uh, turn our attention to our weather. I'm telling you, really nice out there right now. Yeah, we got some sunshine today, Jay. Yes, we did, and temperature warmed up a few degrees above normal for this time of year, and there's hardly any wind. Right now in Sioux Falls, we still have that blue sky out there. Temperature has just dropped to 52 degrees with a very light southwest breeze, and that's kind of what we have all across the Kelland region today. In Aberdeen, you can see the setting sun in the western sky there, 53 degrees with a southwest West wind at 16 miles an hour. In Pier, nothing but blue over the capital, 58. And in Rapid City, we have sunshine. Oh, I should mention, the left-hand side of your screen, that is smoke from a uh, prescribed burn. If you're looking, wondering what that brown thing is, it was stuff in the sky off the left. Uh, Rapid City, though, warm, 58 degrees right now, south breeze at 8 miles an hour. There you see the temperatures. Most everybody is a little bit above average, and that's what you get when you have a southwest wind. The southwest wind is a warming wind this time of year. For tonight, skies clear, low, 30 Sioux Falls, 26 Aberdeen, 27 in Pier, 26 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, sunshine in the morning. Then the clouds will thicken up from the southwest during the day. It'll be mild in Sioux Falls, 58 for that high. 54 in Aberdeen, 55 in Pier, 58 degrees in Rapid City. I said those clouds will thicken up. We could be seeing some spotty showers late tomorrow night. But again, the best chance of rain, as we've been saying all week long, is on Saturday. Saturday looks cloudy and rainy and not as warm. We'll talk about that and look ahead to the rest of the weekend in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jay. Former President Donald Trump's win of the presidency has many in Minnesota wondering what the next steps will be for Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Walz. Vice President Kamala Harris gave her concession speech uh, Wednesday afternoon. Though Walls did not speak at the event, he was asked what was next as he left the rally. His reply, Minnesota. Walls returned to his state Wednesday night and plans to continue to serve his second term as governor of Minnesota. 
Peggy Flanagan, who would have stepped into the governorship had Walz's ticket won, will remain lieutenant governor. Meanwhile, Minnesotans overwhelmingly agree on one issue, to continue using lottery money to protect the environment. Reg Chapman with our CBS affiliate in Minneapolis explains. If you have walked on a trail or swam in a lake in Minnesota, you've benefited from the Environmental Natural Resources Trust Fund. The fund was designed decades ago using money from the state lottery. A long time ago, in 1988, Minnesotans decided to have a lottery. And then from there, they said, okay, if we're going to do this, we want some proceeds to go to the outdoors. So whenever you buy that lottery ticket or scratch off, 40% of the proceeds go to the fund. That money goes to the environment. Does things like parks and trails, clean water research, habitat protection, even cool things like outdoor programs for kids. Marcus Starr with Conservation Minnesota says to get the fund on the ballot, it had to go through the legislature. He says it was done in a bipartisan fashion and was probably one of the most bipartisan bills of the last two sessions. Representative Althino Hollins authored the bill. Every 25 years it comes back up and we have to reaffirm that that is in fact what we want to do with that lottery money. So it didn't surprise me that 77 percent of the people voted yes. Every single congressional district voted over 50 percent to pass this, something the coalition of organizations that work together to bring awareness to the need are celebrating. It was a group of 150 organizations across the state, from advocacy organizations on the environment to businesses like Hospitality Minnesota uh, to like hunters like Ducks Unlimited and Pheasants Forever, all the way to like the Craft Brewers Guild who care about clean water. The fund generates 80 to 90 million dollars per year, 1,700 projects completed in the last 25 years. The hope is more projects to protect the environment will now be possible. Rich Chapman, WCCO News. Maintenance on the Superior Hiking Trail and the Dodge Nature Center in West St. Paul are examples of the projects completed with the money from the lottery fund.